Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today I'm outside and I want to tell you where I am. So I'm standing on the banks of the River Clyde, which is near Glasgow. The River Clyde runs all the way through Glasgow. It's kind of iconic. It's the main river and many companies and media are named after the river. For example, Radio Clyde. <clears throat> Behind me, because I'm facing the river, is a shopping center which is called Bray Head. And I'm standing at the back end of the shopping center. You might hear the birds and you also might hear a few mechanical Machines, objects, uh, little trucks or buggies whizzing by. Now, let me just explain uh, what I'm seeing on the River Clyde. So basically, the River Clyde was very, very famous for shipbuilding. It provided ships for all over the world. And it was also a place where you could go to catch a boat to go to different places. This whole river was known for this. And for over 150 years, the river was a source of provision for the people. Clyde gets its name from an old goddess called, I believe it was Clutha, or something similar. It was the female goddess of the water, because in the old days, before Christianity came, uh, every river or mountain had its own spirits or god. And I'm also just to my left looking at the mountains uh, and some skyscraper apartment blocks as well. The mountains are looking a little bit misty. I think the rain is probably coming. Well, uh, the River Clyde now is a kind of a mixture. There's the old derelict buildings, which are still there from the shipbuilding times. There's some Victorian warehouses I'm looking at. There's some walls on the other side of the river which have well, what looks like ancient rings in them, big iron rings, obviously, to tie boats up with in the past. And then as part of the uh, renovation project, they've also built some new apartment blocks which look really out of place in contrast with... Uh, with the other things on the river. I can't decide if the river is actually black because it looks dirty or if it's just reflecting the sky, which is very gray and black. And they've planted a lot of trees around the river as well <coughs> and made a walkway for people to walk on, which I'm standing on. But there's also, there's also uh, memories of the River Clyde here. For example, I can see an old crane that must have been here, I don't know how many years, and been used by the builders, perhaps the last builders who left this place. And there's also a kind of a port further down. I don't know what that is exactly, but it looks like some kind of signaling area, you know, like a communications tower for boats, presumably, which still come up and down here, although the river looks barren. Okay, so I'm standing on this kind of like new promenade thing. Uh, there's some safety instructions, two life buoys, you know, those rubber rings that you throw into the water if you see someone drowning. Uh, it's very industrial. I mean, there's a green gas canister here with ladders going up. I don't know what that is or what it would be used for. And then there's these big old grey industrial warehouses which look kind of new. So there's obviously still activity, and in contrast to that, the mountains are very green and beautiful, with little bits of yellow uh, sparked over them. I'm not sure what mountains they actually are. Uh, my geography of this area is really bad. Um, okay, and to my right, 
There's a warehouse for Krispy Kreme donuts, you know, that American coffee company that sells the donuts and loads of delivery vans there. Uh, there's birds really making a lot of noise, um, obviously gathering fish out of the Clyde, although I'm not sure I would go even go near it. Uh, there, there's also um, a group of swans which are nestling nicely on the other side. The water's looking a little bit rough. Um, I don't know if they regulate that, if there's any keys or, as we call them, locks on the river to regulate the river rising and falling. There must be somewhere, I suppose. Um, and of course, right behind me is this massive sign that says Brayhead Shopping Center. And it's like a big glass kind of monstrosity because even though it looks huge, once you go inside it, Many of the shops have closed uh, because of um, our ongoing crisis after COVID, uh, of prices rising. Less and less people go in here. Uh, it was just five years ago, one of the most popular shopping centers. So just in the same way as Margaret Thatcher took away all the shipping in the 1980s and closed all of this area down and left it barren, it has made quite a good recovery by some kind of rejuvenation happening, the building of the shopping centre, for example. Uh, but there's a lot of memories here. I mean, even I had an uncle who worked on the River Clyde making boats as late as the 1980s. And uh, just looking at it now, the whole place looks dead. It's very hard to imagine anything was happening here, but yet there's a strange kind of a thing stirring a memory or you, you would know maybe that something big used to operate here in many ways it looks like people have just sat down their tools and walked away i hear some of the older people talking about this area and they smile when they do but they also carry a great sadness because it's like an industry that just swept away not only this i mean when i was a teenager uh, in the city centre of Glasgow, there were loads of insurance companies, financial companies, banks, and, and now I can see they're all up for sale, being converted into properties and uh, uh, changing, you know. Many of them have become restaurants. It's, it's very hard for even me to imagine, and I'm not exactly old. Um, so it's, it's hard to see that. Um, yeah, so that, that's the River Clyde. So let me just describe again what I'm seeing. Water, which is very, very grey, very wide river. Safety signs, you know, those red and white barriers on the other side, which are sealing off industrial warehouses, new apartment blocks built just next to that, gas canisters, a communications tower, large grey communist looking buildings i don't know what they're doing in there and then they've obviously planted trees to make it seem more natural somehow which have came up birds are diving into the river picking up fish and disappearing but yet i can't get it out of my head that there's so many memories here it's, yeah wonderful inspiring place for an artist especially one who knows the history to come and behind me the brayhead shopping center um it's all glass, glass panels, and I'm just looking up. I can see Pizza Hut, and there's a very bitter, overweight lady staring at me uh, from the window. Um, and there's, well, there is an ice rink in here somewhere where they, they play um, ice hockey. I think the Paisley Pirates is the local team here. Uh, very good for spectating. And uh, many people dressed up in Space Age costumes. There must be something happening here, maybe a comic convention or something as well. I can see them. I would like to find out what that is, but since British people, we, we don't really speak to each other, so I can't really go up to them and say, excuse me, why are you dressed up like a spaceman? It would be nice if I could do that, but uh, yeah. Um, and that's it. So uh, that's really the news. The thing to hang on to here is that view of the mountains. It's a, it must be one of the only 
views where I don't see those wind turbines where I live. The mountains are all covered with them. So uh, a beautiful view there. Um, it's also a little man behind me sitting uh, on steps staring at a wall uh, which probably is just a really good um, example of the mood here. There's something that feels just kind of hopeless. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, on top of that, there's a bus station just next to the, the shopping centre. I wouldn't say a bus station. Bus parade, maybe? Uh, yeah, a place where you catch the bus. So let's call it a bus parade or a few bus stops. Um, and I can see one of these giant warehouses for a shop called Next. Uh, Ikea is over there as well. Um, Ikea... Well, again, it's like... The problem with this place is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, apart from the river, unless you drive, you can't get here. Of course, I came up by bus, so there are ways, but uh, it's not, not the best, you know. It's very forlorn. I think that would be an adjective. And the airport is close by as well, and you can hear a plane reminding me of that, uh, just passing over. Um, so, yes, a mixture of old and new here. Uh, kind of sad, they could do a lot more with this, especially just by bringing it to life, but the people here aren't really very empowered to do that. Everything here, people say, oh, someone else's problem, and they just walk away. Well, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of this part of the River Thames. Oh, River Thames? No. <laughs> Sorry, River Clyde. The River Thames is the one that passes through London. And that's it. I'll catch you all soon. See you. Bye.